So in this video, which will be the last showing the transcription process, you will see how I go about transcribing a canon. And this is another one of the larger deviations from my general approach, and you'll see why. Okay, so I'm gonna m make a new score. And then I see three soprano clefs here. So soprano, soprano, soprano. Key is G major, so four four, tempo, one hundred and seventy beats per minute. I'm gonna start off with a hundred measures. The title canon for three voices in G. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, K234, done, and let me zoom this out a bit so you can see it better, okay. And I'm gonna turn on the turn the mixer volume all the way up because I had to do that with the voices because they're super quiet. And I'm also gonna go ahead and put a forte dynamic there as well. Okay, and I wanted the tempo to say Allegro. And then I'm going to start with the top staff and I'll input the notes on the first phrase. Second phrase.
we'll put the third phrase. And now I'll put in the lyrics for those three phrases.
And now, this is where it starts deviating. I am going to copy and paste all this. And I can see that in the top staff here, the first phrase and the second phrase, with no third phrase. So that's where the canon ends, right there. I'm going to delete those measures. And then I'm going to keep doing that. And then the third voice enters here. And then I'm going to save this. Losses in the video. K234. And it's done. That, that was quick. And cannons are often like that. Now, this is one of the rare cases where I see an open score canon from a composer of the classical era. And basically, what open score means regarding canons is that. All the measures are written out, no repeat signs, nothing else to condense it down. Just the whole thing written out as it's played. Most of the time in canons of the classical era, I will see repeat signs that I indicate, okay, here's the part that's r repeated, and when I encounter those, I, I like, transform it into the open score. I, I don't put the repeat signs in there. I put in the equivalent amount of music in open score.
But here, I didn't have to do that because Mozart already had it in open score. So that was kind of nice. Now, just to show you a case where I, I would have to do something a little different. I'm going to show another Mozart canon here. Mm, that's another open score one. Huh? Actually, maybe I'll be more likely to find it within the four voices. Huh? Okay, so this is an example of a canon that has repeat signs in it. And for a canon like this, I would not put in these repeat signs. Uh, I would instead expand it out by uh, however m much is needed and then And basically do the same thing that you saw me do with this cannon. And then uh, I'd end it at where the cadence is, which... might not be the end of the phrase, the end of the measure. So now uh, I'm going to listen to this canon.
All right. So, yeah, uh, this is a deviation from my general approach because in my general approach, I would have gone right to the ending measure without stopping to copy and paste. But with a canon, I go to the last lyric phrase where the last of the voices enters, and then I start copying and pasting. Until I reach the end of the canon. So that's a bit different from my general approach. As I said, this is the last video of this series that goes over the transcription process. The next set of videos will go over other aspects of my transcription project, like the data that I track which composers are on my certain versus uncertain list, and what factors go into the upload schedule for each composer. And I will also go over the upload process and what goes into that, the Muse score upload process, so it is. So stay tuned for those videos, starting with the data tracking.